Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, Cobra Kai has returned. John and Greg back at it, and we got our buddy Andrew Gordon from the Movie Source channel to join us. I look for the people who are the biggest fans of things, and he is easily the biggest Karate Kid Saga fan I know. He absorbs the Easter eggs. Andrew, you're the new Koi <laughs> for the Karate Kid today. Cobra Koi today. But guys, we go ahead, hit that like button. That'd be very much appreciated. Subscribe and click that notification bell. Get notified when a reaction for the next Cobra Kai is up. Full length watch alongs where you sync up with the time code or over at our Patreon page. Cover a whole bunch of shows over there. We're at the same tier. You get the option for reaction highlights and watch alongs included. Lastly, thanks to the boys at Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Andrew. He smiles more than he's letting on right now. When I watch this episode, I will be. Good, good, good. He maintained the stoicness. All right. <laughs> he's a real Terry Silver here. <laughs> Cobra Kai! <laughs> yeah! That's what I want. Yeah, I hope he's just as fucking over the top. As they would say in Karate Kid Part 3, party time. Okay. He's developed class. Oh, we always had class. <laughs> Crease. It's a phone call from the last episode. Hello? Hey. Long time. <laughs> wow. Excursion. <laughs> Luke just throws that lightsaber over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to see the version where he tries to teach Daniel piano. <laughs> Begin a new era. Many of us used to be enemies, but rivalries don't need to last forever. Good uplifting speech. We know that Cobra Kai is going to use every dirty trick in the book. There's only one way we're going to be able to beat them. By kicking their asses so hard, they shit themselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna teach an aggression stronger than anything Cobra Kai can throw at us. They strike first, we'll pre-strike. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just warm up with some simple exercises. All right, line up. This is gonna go great. <laughs> I like how Daniel still has that cut from season three. Fighting position. Right leg back. Front kick, ready? Yeah! <laughs> oh. oh in the kidneys. <laughs> hey, 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 you're just swinging at each other. Don't you teach any defense? Best defense is more offense. Oh, oh. whoa. Uh, why do you have a rock in the middle of your dojo? Come <laughs> on, <laughs> 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 you got this. Come <laughs> on, well, we're gonna get sued here. Uh, sue me for what? You got literal dumpster fires going right now. <laughs> Oh, Ow. they work so well together. Yeah. I hope you die this season. Die a brutal teenage death. Well, look who showed up. With a van sponsorship. Those two lovebirds. I know Cobra Kai helped when I was getting jumped in juvie but I am not going to be a pawn in this bet that you made with my dad and Mr. LaRusso. Okay. I think of you as a king. Oh, okay. Damn, I would have accepted Knight. I gave him every opportunity to come back, but he chose Diaz. Oof, that's a soft spot right there. Yeah, well, they have a pretty good chance of winning now that they've teamed up. They're not the only ones teaming up. I love the continuity and seeing all the cuts and bruises from the finale of season three. It's good script supervision. You're doing good, Andrew. You're doing good. <laughs> Every scar and Easter egg. Cobra Kai shits ought to be locked up. Especially that Tory psycho. If anyone deserves no mercy, it's her. They're gonna fight. I know things are less than ideal. A small boy was thrown through our window. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, tonight's main course is fajitas and grilled vegetables. I have pico de gallo, and corn and flour tortillas. El gringo. 
¿Para quién? Somos ecuatorianos, no somos mexicanos. <laughs> Here, try this. Spicy mango. <laughs> From, From Ralph's. <laughs> Authentico. I mean, I'm not the only one who's getting back together with an ex, huh, Sensei? He had a date with the love of his life. Oh. Wow. Dude, dude, dude not Miguel! Stop it! <laughs> Broco, dude. We took all those cool pictures and made you look cool. I mean, not to say that you didn't look cool already, Oof. but, you know. We had to look special for the special lady. Why don't you tell him about the sushi? We don't have to talk about it. Stop. No. Yeah, I don't know why he's being shy right now. Get me again, Mr. White. So we thought. So we got the dragon roll. Jesus Christ, Miguel. Miguel. Your back's gonna get no broken chill. again. <laughs> I think it's better that we don't rush into anything. With everything that's happened and everything that's still happening, I think we should give it some time. Miguel's the new villain. Thanks, Miguel. <laughs> Oh, oh, Carla. I may help. I got it. Yeah. He's upgraded the uh, hotness of his maids since the third movie. Eagle Fang trains out front. And I'll be back here with the Miyagi Do's. But I thought we were stronger working together. We're still working together. Just separately. <laughs> on opposite ends of the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible plan. Miyagi Do should go with Cobra Kai. Oh, absolutely. You're supposed to have someone spot you, you know. They don't need a spotter. It's so badass. Ever since he cut his hair. You're right to skip practice. If you're gonna stay on defense, this isn't the right dojo for you. Damn it, he's bench pressing like a hundred pounds. Terrence and I have a history of teaching children with martial arts. <laughs> That's adorable. I had no idea you had a karate phase. Karate is not a phase. It's a way of life. Oh crap, Terry's gonna kick everyone's ass. <laughs> everyone at the party. <laughs> now everyone, close your eyes and relax. Stop whining like a little bitch. Get up. <laughs> Keep it down, please. I'm trying to teach in there. Keep it down? <laughs> What do you want me to whisper? Karate's a loud sport. I can't train my students if you're shouting obscenities. Obscenities? Yeah. What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Be careful with that. Why, you think I'm gonna break it? You already broke a door. And he stole Mr. Miyagi's medal. And you beat the shit out of me. I'm really sorry about all that. Go back with your little eagle gang. I'm not wanting it. What the hell? Guys. He's not wanted eagle gang either. Mr. Yes, Russo, can we talk? What? I don't know where I fit in here. Well, what did you expect? You've burned bridges with pretty much everyone here. Jesus, <laughs> dude. Don't disrespect my dojo in front of your students. Don't tell me how to run my class. I'll run my class over. I'll do whatever the hell I no, want. I know what you're doing. Yeah? Okay? And as long as you're under my roof, they're both our students. Oh, yeah, no, no. Well, under what roof? We're outside. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> the Russo and I have in common is hating Crease. I thought that was enough, but it's not. Can't come from a place of hate. Forget it, kid. Take down Cobra Kai on our own. What about Rocky Three? Rocky Three is a great movie. Why? How did Rocky defeat Clever Lang? Did you do it alone? No. He got hit a bunch. Again, again! I'm not getting killed, he's getting mad! Even though they're complete opposites, they made it work and it was only because someone had to reach out first. Yeah. That was Apollo. <laughs> Why can't LaRusso be Apollo? Strike it first and more badass. Rocky Three is the movie he met Ali at. Oh, Andrew with the oh, Easter eggs! Believe me, I never stopped caring about you. you never stopped caring about Miguel either. It was more complicated. There's nothing complicated about it. It's a choice and you chose. You're right. Your feelings don't matter, it's logical. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just come back, it could really help bring everybody together. It's all that I want. You're not getting what you want. Why do people think she's like so spoiled? She only has a Mercedes. You see that Mercedes? <laughs> I'm doing just fine. Are you? Because the Terry Silver that I knew would have roundhouse old four eyes back there for calling Cobra Kai adorable. He's grown up, man. You're a champ and LaRusso working together. That's why I'm here. I need a partner. And the only other person who knows how to teach Cobra Kai is you. You ready to step back into the ponytail? No. Back in the 80s, I thought I could conquer the world. <laughs> 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 damn close. I was so hopped up on cocaine. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> Glad they acknowledged it. <laughs> yep. Terrorizing a teenager over a high school karate tournament. You're so Love sociopath, you. dude. <laughs> it was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> no alcohol required. Got my ass into therapy. Found clarity. Therapy just hurts people. Turns out you disappearing was the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh. Please thank Cheyenne for the tofu. I like the reversal, how he's trying to recruit Terry for his revenge plan. That's interesting. I'm sorry for interrupting your class today. No, don't apologize. It shows weakness. Not Johnny Long <laughs> think to deal. <laughs> I know we got off on the wrong foot, and I'm sorry I snapped at you. Oh, Apollo? Ding, ding. Yeah, well, you should be sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe we can hash things out. Him? <sighs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Just give me a cup of that juice. Sam. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny to me. <laughs> Join Miyagi Do all on the same page. And why do I have to be the one to switch? Why can't you join Eagle Fang? Oh, come on. Guys, make something new. Miyagi Fang. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Forget it. Forget it. I don't know what I was thinking. How is this ever gonna work? The yeah, mediator. Couples therapy. Mindfulness app. You know, if this is final, then we're gonna have to tell the kids. We'll tell them tomorrow. Rip the band-aid off like badasses. My dad was gone by the time I woke up. Do you know if he had a chance to connect with Johnny? No, I didn't see him this morning either. What's up, Hawk? Hawk! Oh. Get a load of this chump. What are you doing? Since a crease isn't back yet, so I'm gonna get you guys warmed up. Oh, shit. <laughs> get the hell out of here, man. Now, who says we even want you? Okay, hit me. If you can. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Get him, Robbie. Damn. Nice. Nice. <laughs> oh my, he's gonna murder them. Got some good choreography here. Damn, not one person. Ooh. Punch her in the face. See that guy? You want to win a woman's heart? You beat her up. Ouch! I do the deal. I'll go. Expecting you to say to stay. <laughs> Stay. So that's how you win a girl's heart. You beat her up. Yeah, you learn a lot from the show. I am the sensei now. The sooner we get this over with, the better. Whatever. Let's just get on the same page of how we're going to break it to him. What the fuck, Hawk? What are you doing? Back, it's coming down. Hey, what are you doing? Talk is cheap. So I'm building a bridge. Well, more specifically, an Okinawan sparring deck. What? Mr. Miyagi just used this area for extra storage, but a new deck would mean a lot more room for training. We're all gonna help build it. Assuming our sensei's approved. Hmm. Oh, you guys. It was them teaching us all along. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Thanks for not letting me go out with your mom. We all need to look ourselves in the mirror. Realize who we really are. Terence, would you be a darling and get a bottle of Mar Roche from your cellar? Of course. God, I miss cocaine. <laughs> it beat the enemy. It helps to know the enemy's playbook. That's why I'm going to teach you Miyagi-Do karate. 
Shit. They're warmed up for you, Sensei. Oh, man. Robbie. You were the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> just in front of the story of the dark side, not join them. <laughs> We both had a hard time pulling that quote, I know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Teamwork. Oh! Uh, Still got nice. eyes. Terrence, is everything okay? I kick her head. Coming. That's a good adrenaline rush. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Great first episode. Yeah. That ass. Oh, I'm so glad they did that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, pause it. That guy's might not know that as a family yes, friend that's, of that's the what, Albas. That's yeah. what, what it touched you. <laughs> family friend of the Albas. Great loss for us. And uh, yeah, we'll miss him. <sighs> Let's stay focused on that and not transition back to talking about the show. This is a, Ed Ed all about eulogy me. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great man, that Ed. Funny as hell. <laughs> all right. Hey, that was, that was right. Just, so, this show is so good, you know? <laughs> it just like throws you right into it and you're like, just as good as you always have been, show. Every single time. Man, what a solid pilot. I like how it picks up with some version of expectations of like, you know, Terry Silver throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder and then they do it again with, uh, you know, with the Miyagi dough. Like, let's begin. They don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it was such like a cool moment at the end of last season. Yeah. And then they, they realize, oh, they're, they're really clueless about it all. Uh, this was really solid, man. The Terry Silver stuff is definitely the most exciting part to it. Just because, especially if like, uh, I mean, did you rewatch Karate Kid 3 in preparation? I rewatched it last night just to prepare myself. Andrew's seen it like so many times. It's a great movie. It's, it's the best Karate movie. Kid movie. It's a great movie. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so fun. Uh, it's so fun. It's so damn fun. And then I like taking the, it's, there's sort of like an action hero approach with the way they're doing Terry Silver that like aged up former guy who used to be like so eccentric and he's like the grounded version of him older you know it's that yeah. trope of like you're the key we need you to come back and save our operation no I'm, I'm retired I'm out of the game yeah. I'm not coming but now he's having his reconsiderations while making fun of people in California the kind of folk we'd hang out with that's for sure but Andrew, what'd you think, man? I think you said it best. Subversion of expectation was the. Was uh, that. Did the, you see that? Bam! Right away, you got in there. That was so impressive. Perfect. That was so impressive. That was, that was the theme of this episode. I mean, from the moments you guys mentioned with the lightsaber moment, obviously we had Hawk with the sledgehammer. We're like, oh shit, was he gonna break that picture, or what's he gonna yeah. hit the rock, or no? They're just building a uh, nice Okinawan bit bridge or whatever. And so, I mean, I, I like that they were uh, going for that and. I mean, my favorite part, obviously, of Karate Kid Part 3, which I'm sure many of yours, is, of course, Terry Silver. So I'm so glad that they got Thomas Ian Griffith back. I know he's retired, but that was great. Oh, to, really? And brought him out yeah, of retirement. For yeah, well, uh, come on. It's Cobra Kai. You got to come back uh, for out of retirement. But uh, I, I, thought I, thought, meant the, I thought you meant the actor. Yeah, yeah, he was retired. The actor was yeah, retired? Yeah, oh, damn. Retired. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so the <laughs> making of as an actual yeah. portion. Yeah. Dude, he, <laughs> was just, <laughs> he was busy doing cocaine, no. okay? They got back from the <laughs> okay. show. He's living the real but, Terry Silver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think the thing that uh, I most appreciated, I mean, besides like just seeing all the characters back season four again, was the chemistry between Kreese and Terry so yeah. we're like, that's the strongest point for me when it comes to Cry Kid Part 3. And for years, I did not really care for that film. I know you guys just said you love that film, but after Cobra Kai Season 3, with the depth and the uh, what we got from the flashbacks with Kreese and Silver, like that movie made me just appreciate their relationship when you rewatch Cry Kid Part 3. Because again, you yeah. see where where it all their relationship started and why they care for each other so much. It's just, it's just got a nuance and such an in-depth uh, relationship. So I'm just glad to see again like the falling out and just mm -hmm. well, obviously we know that the, he's gonna uh, you know come back and help uh, crease and all that but again just seeing them together was just the highlight for me and of course we got to really quickly mention I love that they uh, paid homage uh, uh, to uh, the great Ed Asner I thought that was very yeah, nice I, I wasn't expecting that at first just because my mind was just so into this episode but seeing that warmed my heart yeah Jake, go J. Jonah Jameson 
I think uh, it's Spider Man animated series. Yes. Oh, people getting confused. Like, like, what? J.K. Simmons? Is J.K. And Simmons. Edward. You got it wrong. Andrew's yeah. talking about Fake dirt. <laughs> and, uh, and he's actually Uncle Ben in Spectacular Spider Man. Uh, so, but yeah, the the whole thing with um, Terry Silver at the end, I, I like when they this show takes something that is so. Like they deconstructed really, really quick with going through the montage of like, like we. Does the movie ever say he's hopped up on cocaine? Because it's so obvious that he is in that film. Like it's, it's such the embodiment of like '80s X, like the Wolf of Wall Street kind of character, yeah. that '80s like narcissistic, greedy guy. And, and I love that they broke down just this is. That's why I love the movie. I'm like it's just so insane. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Like you got this really pleasant story with Miyagi and and uh, Daniel. <laughs> And the girl across the street, and then it just always takes such a shift to when you cut to uh, Terry. It's just so amplified, and I, I love it because of that reason. But I like that they did the the grounded approach with him, and, and like the subtle character nuance, especially when he. I didn't actually see that coming where he's gonna kick the bottle mm-hmm. at the end against the wall. I thought that was great, and then like Hawk, you know, there was you got a lot of crap for saying this um, in, in the last season. I remember this. I was like spent like hours editing that video and then all the people fixated on was something I said way late into the video <laughs> one of those was I had a little bit of gripe with uh, the way Hawk's turn, turn went in that. And it wasn't a big deal to me, but it was something that I was like, yep, everyone's gonna fixate on this. <laughs> so um, yeah, and here they're dealing with that now. Now they're really dealing with it of like, you're not really accepted anywhere. You betrayed Cobra Cry. You attacked Miyagi-To, you're, you're not accepted any of this. And I like that we're gonna deal with him having a path of redemption as well upon all of this. Guys, clearly Craig had not seen a World Wrestling Entertainment match before, so that's why <laughs> yeah, that's he was true. having this moment. <laughs> But no, I, I take it away, John. I absolutely not editing this down. Take it away. I agree with what you just said. I yeah, think take it away. Part of the key to this take show is that they have a very <laughs> conscientious approach to how they continue their events. It's very linear in in the way that they set these building blocks down. But I think they take a very uh, I'm just going to use the word conscientious again. Approach to uh, thinking of what the real repercussions of these moments would be. Like yeah. they're good at drawing that dramatic. Yeah, you have that punch at the end of the season of like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Sure. They're teaming up, but now that's the beginning of a whole new journey, and they're really good at being conscious of that and expanding the story with that in mind. And so I think they've, you know, like a lot of things happen in this episode that you kind of expect to happen ultimately, but they feel very natural because of the attention that they've paid to yeah. the characters and the fact that yeah whenever a new prospect happens or one character comes to another and you know says their piece and tries to entice like they're good at having uh natural debates around these things and then paying them off either in a satisfying way where you think it might pay off or subverting your expectations well i think what they do really well is like even though we know some plot beats are going to happen like we know that the robbie is going to go to cobra kai we know that Daniel and, and Johnny will, fuck, will have a, at least a temporary time We're trying to make it work. I don't really know. But we know that this episode will not end with them just going, all right, we're splitting up. Yeah. You know, like we, we know that. But what, what I think is cool is that you see the character. You, it's about the journey, not really about the end beats of it. Because you see like, um, oh my God, what is her name? Samantha. Uh, trying to spoiled talk. Spoiled girl. Yeah, spoiled girl. Spoiled brat. Yeah. It's everything Hannah. Everything's always Tidal good for bitch. her all the time. <laughs> no struggles <laughs> for this character. <laughs> um, but yeah, Samantha uh, like trying to talk to Robbie initially, even though we know it's not going to go the way we expect. I like that you get a scene to really flesh it out. That's like what's what's so great about this show. Is they they flesh things out of Robbie talking with Crease at first and being like, nah, man, like that that adds so much more impact. Or even Johnny and Daniel. Probably the most predictable part was that they were always going to have to make it work at the end of this episode in some way. Something would have to happen. But you don't see that coming though with the whole thing with uh, Hawk trying to work to build the bridge. Apparently they didn't tell anyone about it. Yeah, it's great. Showed us. Show it's going to go real well. Like, show what's it do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's going to question me or try to exactly. Yeah. And, and also you mentioned earlier, I love how they did the role reversal of uh, Kreese recruiting yeah. uh, Terry this time around, whereas in part three, as we remember, Kreese went to uh, give up the dojo keys and then yeah. he sent him to Tahiti and then he wanted to do the revenge yeah. tour basically for him. So it's, it's. I mean, that's what I love about this show is there's a lot of role reversals, a lot of changes from the series, but still, they still respect the original series, so. And they also, sh- what, what's cool though too is one thing in Karate Kid 3 that um, I thought they did to Kreese was they diminished his villain status because it really elevated Terry. 
and made Terry seem like the, the one with the power, right? I agree with you, but also too, um, just to add to your point, um, the actor Martin Cove, he was, I forgot which film he was filming in 1988 or 89 when they were filming that. So he could barely be on set to, oh, okay. for the film. So they had to diminish his role big time. But yes, I agree with what you're saying though. I'm not attacking actor Martin Cove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his fault. Yeah. No, no, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying where they had to write the character down from. He was he was originally supposed to be in the film a lot more than yeah. he, it was originally intended. So. so what I love that they do here is the way the dynamics are established is Kreese is back in the power position between this whole villain recruitment and uh, running Cobra Kai. You know, like it still seems like Terry would be supporting to Crease yeah. versus how it's just like Crease took over Crease's top yeah. dog and, and like Crease just answers to Terry now, you know, uh, the way I did Karate Kid 3. So I like that the, the, the power dynamics are very much present. I mean, we don't know. Maybe maybe Terry will try to pull the rug out over him and be like, Cobra Kai's mine now. Yeah. Or, or maybe he'll go see Johnny and Danny <laughs> because he did seem to at least acknowledge that like I, I terrorized a teenager but, all those years ago. But I think that's part of the power of Crease is he could pull out the worst in you. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And I can't wait to see that moment when Daniel and Terry uh, see each other for the first time. But I'm probably going to die on this anthill alone. I'm probably going to be wrong. And you guys can call me out on it when it is when I am wrong. But you think Jaden Smith is better? Yes. Uh, do do yeah. you yeah. guys think that Terry, <laughs> do you think it's going to be revealed that Terry Silver is Miguel's father? Because I, when I rewatched Cobra Kai season one, uh, and also in season two, Carmen did mention to uh, Johnny twice not once, but twice, that Miguel's father was very rich and powerful and he was a bad man. I so. mean, it's funny, when I saw that woman show up uh, <laughs> the one day, I was like, eh, it kind of reminds me of Miguel's mom oh, a little bit. No. I, I'm, not, I'm probably gonna be totally wrong on that, but I don't know, it's just they mentioned it. We can look it up now. Uh, well, if you want to just stick to yeah. it. You, no, let's have it spoiled for you, man. Like we did with No Way Home. Uh, yeah, I know everything. <laughs> All the leaks for <laughs> Cobra Kai. Yeah, we don't need to look this up, man. It's we're good. No, I'd rather be surprised. I'd like you to be right. That that would be a great thing to be right about. Yeah. That'd be impressive. That'd be a nicely caught detail, Andrew. Cobra Koi. <laughs> That's a show I would watch. Yeah. Hey, Koi doesn't even need to fight anybody. He just talks them. Yeah. Just talks them into submission. All right. Any other Easter eggs you notice, Andrew? You want to point out really quick? Not at the moment, but uh, fail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about all those scars from the previous. That was episode. good. That was good continuity. I will. I will admit. I, I really did like that. Something uh, the MCU does a really good job of too is just you know keeping up the scars. I think Spider-Man: Homecoming is where we saw that where Tony still had the scars from yeah. Captain America: Civil War, and is I it, would mention that to you in theaters. Is this the first season to pick up, like seconds? Like, well, like well, yeah, right at the end. Because of... season season three started a few weeks after season two ended, and then. Uh, when, uh, season two end uh, did not start right after season one, so I, th yeah. I believe you're correct. This was yeah, this was like literally overlapping because it's, like, you see the yeah. other side of the phone call at yeah. the start of the season. Yeah, interesting. Wow, we plan on all the greatest things. Got the Spider-Man No Way Home transition from Far From Home ending the beginning. What happened to the computer? This has been on a while and now it's idling. All right, can you, can you, can you touch the button? I know. Yeah, we're good. All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for being here. Andrew, appreciate that Rocky Three pointing thing out. One over my head. Dude, you're, you're the, welcome. the Apollo Creed of this review. Thanks, guys. So you, you pointed it out, free struck first, just like a badass. Running the video now. <laughs> Follow Andrew on Movie Sources. <laughs> See you guys. All right. That was good. It's better.